What is it? I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. No? Yes. No, you're right. I'm not. What? I hate it. Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired work within. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. Take a guess, why don't you? I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Great. To the heavyweight jam. Hardcore! Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega! Internally coherent! Encore! All right! Yeah! He furrows his brow. Hardcore! Ah! The question is, what is the question? But there was a question? Talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Lloyd? That's fine, man. Eh? But I've got to warn ya, our signs are still off. It'll take some time for me to get my sign on. The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Again, so uh, how things going? And what happened? Oh man, the crab man, you mean? Who is he? What did you think?
Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah. Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? Come on, man. Who will you trust? The spooky programmer or us? We just want to make the world a better place. Feels the love! Get down and feel it! A half-hearted sell of something which does not seem worth buying. You'll get there, believe me. When we've got our gear set up, things will be flowing and pumping. Anyway, now that it's settled, how did she seem? I mean, disposition-wise, about the dance club idea. Yah, Oda 9. Rocking it or dropping it? What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam and into a laser-lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! And you can't just evict her? Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment. But then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries. We'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? Excellent! Good luck, my friend! The number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. What things? idea how you arrived at that conclusion but it's wrong look we even have speakers one speaker they have one speaker he said it was for his nose what more do you want and of all cellular based life what's your point Lord Ringer make up your mind first it's the sweat then it's the ether no shit. That's... Come on, that's... I meant to say, not true. need drugs to be hardcore. Shut the fuck up, Egg.
climb down from the equestrian monument, cop man. Consciousness is new to the universe. We all have our ways to ease the shock. We know she has a problem, man. We're working on it. She didn't exactly have a smooth adolescence. What exactly is it you know? Fuck, man. It's difficult to get along with some people, but we're trying to make an effort. We are on a mission here. What do you mean, do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. The optimal way to go about this would be indifference. It begins by you telling him you don't care about any of this. Really? All else? Okay, man. Okay. Things are just so, so hard for an entrepreneur in this city right now. It's not like we lied when we said we want to turn a church into the wickedest club in East Revershall. Because we do! We totally do! We just... Need to turn it into a speed lab before to get our foot in the door. Like I told you, spooky arseholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. No, man, they're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. So, what now? This is it. Judgment time. century development crumbles in the wind. A grape-shot row of fallen houses, and so does Rue de saint Giron and Main Street. The old cinema is sinking underneath Villa La Bosse. What? Fuck, man. I thought we were cool. Pack it up, Egg. He doesn't even look at you.
The mother of humanism stands above you, a precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body, her face oval and sad. Yes, what is it? You told them to leave? They didn't think the cops in this place had it in them. You really like those questions, don't you? They're bloodshot. She really hasn't been getting much sleep lately, has she? I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. You measure it by its surroundings, by that which does exist, which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence, to find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark. Most of the tower disappearing into the shade. Strange things may flourish in the dark. There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe. But it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. I know. No, I don't. Great, thanks. The swallow, you mean? What about it? Great, thanks.
legend. He's back. And firstly, I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. My kind of guy. Here you go, friend. Bottoms up, Captain. Tequila Sunset. Wonderful. Not much, but it will do. This last one is the most Martinet story I've ever heard. I've never heard it mentioned outside of here. At first, I thought it was a joke, to be honest. But I've been on the coast eight, nine months now, and in that time, I've seen at least three expeditions come through searching for something. A shovel hits the sand somewhere behind the reeds, near an abandoned construction yard. The young men look over their shoulders suspiciously. The sound of their digging seems loud in the sudden silence. Hey, hey! Fuck you, Tequila. No, Tequila. Most people already know where they live. Guys like you and me that are the exceptions. All kinds. I've seen archaeologists, gangsters, even a bunch of ad agency types. I'm telling you, Tequila, this thing's got a pull on certain kinds of people. Wait. There's a tingling back here. The stirring of a faint sensation. Some of those expeditions come back after a week or so, looking haggard and dejected. Others don't return at all. The first time I saw one of these expeditions, I thought they were fucking with me. There was no way it could be true. It was just too high concept, even for me. There's no way. It can't be. Or can it? You know. I'm not even sure I should be telling you this story, to be perfectly honest. You're in a fragile state, and it might be too much for you to handle. Okay, fine, I'll tell you. But I'm warning you, it's pretty out there. Our story begins at a legendary design studio, right here in Martinez. There was this designer. His exact name is lost to history, but in life, he was a legend. Made it big in Aranya where he did some real pioneering work on grotesque and sans-serif typography. A fucking genius, man. That is, if he even existed. Who knows? It's an urban legend, after all. He existed, all right. You feel it deep within your basal ganglia. He was as real as you are. I'm talking about... Anyway... Sometime later, he started his own personal studio here in Martinez. And that's when he started working on some really wild stuff. I'm talking some glass-smooth, forward-looking design language. The kind of thing that would totally overthrow the old regime, design-wise. But then, something turned. You see, it's widely known that nose candy and pioneer graphic design work go hand in hand. You know tequila, nose candy, the white railroad, party powder. The kids on the streets also call it snow day. Sinus salt, the white knight. Can't see, for its popularity among the aristocratic class of the prior century. Along with a number of more banal street names, glow, of course, but also flake, powder, pearl. Really, anything that's white will get the idea across. He's talking about cocaine. Shit, yeah, Tequila. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've got to understand, the work this guy was doing was so high concept that regular amounts of cocaine just weren't cutting it. By the end, they were bringing it in by the lorry load. Now, as you might imagine, snorting that much cocaine can't be healthy for a regular human, right? 
Right. Wrong. Do it all the time. All day, baby. Hey, Tequila, pay attention. The story goes that one day he was balls deep in work on what he thought would be his piece de resistance, an advert so minimal it contained neither text nor images, just pure white. Apparently the idea was too high concept even for this genius. He dropped dead right at his desk before he could finish. His last words are recorded to have been, it's as white as a blizzard of cocaine. But the story doesn't end there. Supposedly, when they performed the autopsy, the coroner discovered nearly a quarter kilo of coke jammed into his nasal cavity. That's almost certainly anatomically impossible. Wrong again, nerd. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's right. 250 grams of blow had accumulated in there over the years. We're talking high-grade Saramaritzian pure. Not that cut-rate shit your grandma does. There are those who believe the designer was buried with this quarter key of nose candy still lodged in his sinuses. That's what those expeditions are looking for. The cocaine skull. The Cocaine Skull. Here's the kicker. This designer, this lead designer of a world-famous design studio, was born in Martinez. A local boy, Martin Martinez. That's why he brought his studio here, back to where it all began. And that's why they buried him here, too. Perhaps right under Ab's pipe there. Or probably further down the coast, or in some yard in Martinez proper. A hidden mausoleum, no one knows exactly. No, my grandma always told me his grave lay somewhere on the islets on the bay. This is ludicrous, and physically impossible. Sinuses can contain that amount of anything. Now, now, detective. Always the skeptic. The archaeologists say they want to put it in a museum, the gangsters say they want to sell it on the black market, and the ad agency guys say they're seeking inspiration. Bullshit. They just want to snort it. But you could beat them to it, Harry. You could snort the magic skull cocaine instead. I'm pretty sure they all just want to snort it, though. And why wouldn't they, eh? Sounds like right strong stuff. Don't listen to him or his grandma. He's just making things up. No, my grandma told me. I've heard other people say it too. That it's underwater. Or no, maybe it was the storm sea. Or maybe it's in the air. Or in an ancient step pyramid of shore. In a pyramid? Now that would be something. They're pretty vague about it in general. The gangsters like to claim they're looking for the grave of a friend with picks and shovels. The archaeologists act all official about it, saying they're conducting serious research. Honestly, I think they're not really scientists, just rich. The junkies, for some reason, are pretty upfront about it. They just say they're looking to snort some blow out of a dead man's nasal cavity. Honest men on an honest quest. You should join them. By now, I'd say I know about as much about it as anyone on the coast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on just a minute. Finding it right now is literally impossible. What? For one, the way is blocked. By that big lorry that says Delta Logistics Company on the side. You definitely have to search the area behind that lorry, too. Yet, it is impassable. And second... Outfitting an expedition like that is expensive. It'd have to be a big production to do the cocaine skull justice. You need new gear, people who know what they're doing, all kinds of provisions. 
It's just not feasible within the economic and temporal frame of our current setup. Matter of fact, unless a bunch of money just falls out of the sky, we might never know what's up with that skull. I have to agree. We barely have what we need to solve the case we've got now. We can't afford to run around chasing after quasi-mythical pieces of drug paraphernalia. Besides, it would look extremely bad for the RCM to be caught up in something that has the word cocaine writ large on it. The PR is tricky on this. Wait, maybe there's another way. Maybe up around the coast? Don't give up now. Yeah, well, that's the reality situation for you. Who knows, though? Maybe someday we'll get our chance. Not that I can think of, currently. That might be the case, yes. Hi again, Gendarme. Bye-bye, Gendarme. Hey, was there something you needed? Well, well. Bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes. Got the 20 real? Then why are you wasting my time and yours?
Hi again, Gendarme. It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Nothing else here. Bye-bye, Gendarme. you hold 16 days of coldest April by Yekatina Dar. The cover image shows a row of concrete apartments above which span a black and white rainbow. Indeed, the book is unusually heavy in your hands, as though the cover were lined with lead. It would do that in Grant. You flip through the book. The pages are thinner than you realized and the type quite small and tightly set. It's nearly 600 pages long. The back cover is dominated by a black and white photograph of the author. She can't be much older than her mid-thirties in this photograph. And yet, from this cover, the eyes of a sad old woman stare back at you. In cold, detached prose, the author describes a scene from one of the Hugo Grad riots in the 20s. Youths overturn motor carriages and set trash cans ablaze while heavily armored guardsmen dash in and disperse them in a flurry of baton blows. As ethnic tensions run wild, a pair of young lovers meet each other on the street. Somehow, in the middle of all the chaos, they manage to lock arms and look into each other's eyes. It would physically hurt you to keep reading, are you sure? They go through a brief and somewhat awkward love affair. And in the end, they betray each other and succumb to the absurdity of Guardian life. The man becomes a lens grinder, completely abandoning his former existence. He toils through the daily drudgery at the Lenka Polyfabricate. Happiness and fulfillment have eluded him his whole life. And in the end, he has nothing to do but dedicate himself to the craft. She spends the next several decades standing at a conveyor in a Sosnovor fish processing plant. The smell of fish guts slowly seeps into her hair and skin, as every single one of her dreams dies, one by one. The memory of their short time spent together tortures the former lovers ceaselessly until the end of their days. Years pass in solitude, their bodies growing ever more decrepit. As life leaves their remains between the soil sheets, their final thoughts are filled with regret.
Hello, sir. How is the investigation going? Found any curses yet? That's very good to hear. You'll get to the bottom of this in no time, just like a detective in the stories. Small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. If you say so, but you better stay away from those immoral occult rituals. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword wielding barbarian. On the cover, nearly all the titles contain the word Kiondal somewhere. It is a bestseller for a reason. Large letters on the front form a title, Wirral. The colorful box is illustrated with bucolic vistas. The cover art also features odd-looking humanoids. Some short, some taller, some with pointy ears, others with ephemeral wings. Text underneath the title in smaller typeface reads, 3rd edition, Mega Setting Supplements Module. The side panel adds, a sword and sorcery adventure board game with new maps and miniatures. Mysterious things rattle inside. What could they be? Dice? Plastic miniatures? A fantastical alternate world full of magic and wonder. None of that witless man from Hyondal, fascist dross, hidden behind faux realistic allegory. Wirral is no cliche ridden apologia for colonial violence. Wirral is pure imagination. It's not, it's for pansies. The man from Hyondal is way more awesome. A blurb on the back reads. Tired of the tedium and toil of modern life? Escape to Wirral. Leave behind Isolas and nations with their petty squabbles. Discard electricity, magnets, and boring technological widgets. Succumb to a world of high pastoral fantastique. Unleash your imagination and create an adventure of endless possibilities. Discover the terrible secret threatening Wirral. Can your band of adventurers save the world? Exactly. That's the spirit. All you have to do is read an intricate rulebook, study an assortment of maps, unfold the illustrated game board, and start rolling dice. In no time, you could be romping through grasslands with low-level characters, hunted by Iskala riders, or battling unspeakable monsters in endless dungeons fraught with danger and despair, conjuring up forceful magics to aid your quest. You pry open the box. Inside you find a folded up map, a small booklet, a 24-sided die, and a little plastic figurine. You see a man in ragged clothes wearing a lopsided hat and wielding some sort of a firearm. Huh, interesting. A communar. It is not. The communar are not a part of the game setting. I guess someone misplaced it during the packaging process. Hmm. Good luck finding people who'd want to play as Kaminar. You pick the figurine up by the base to meet your gaze. The little plastic man stares back at you, his face contorted into a disturbing shout. Then you pocket it. A reprint of a crude hand-drawn map. The top left corner reads, Lands of Wirral, 
The map features both small villages and mid-sized towns with odd names, in addition to meadows, forests, hills, lakes and seas, also with odd names. It doesn't seem to correspond with anything you've seen thus far. It's not a very helpful map. A quick guide to the magical races of Wirral. Create your own hero, choosing from any of these completely unique and fantastical backgrounds. The options are in order of importance. The Welkin, the Tweorg, the Humans, the Fairy Folk, and the Pygmies. You stuff it back inside the box. It's made from some sort of wood and has been decorated with peculiar plant motifs. You place the die into your pocket. It's always good to have luck on your side. A colorful box with the title, Wirral, in bold letters. It's a board game. The old woman still sits in her chair, continuing with her chores. As she does so, she quietly hums to herself. The buzz of electric lights blends together with the slow rumble of the ocean waves at night. Yes, I can't really sleep anymore. Only a few hours a night. It happens when you grow older. My suggestion is, don't. Don't grow any older than you already are. That's old enough. What's troubling your mind? It 
It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it, adorned with the expression. Hi, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Oh, that's good to know, I guess. Why is it in the sea? This calls for a funeral, if you ask me. Police business. I understand. Anything I can help you with? Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with?
This medicine cabinet is stocked with drugs, plus an old toothbrush, and it's been used quite a lot. But not for scrubbing blood off tiles, or anything else interesting, it seems. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. The same small, heavy door, no lock in sight. kick. The door still does not move. Demolish the place. Below, in the union box, was there something behind the window? In the hawthorn branches, brushing against the glass. No one knows. It is a fleeting feeling. 